Israel's Benjamin Netanyahu has unveiled his right-wing Likud government's policy priorities. And topping the list is the proposed West Bank settlement expansion. With this, the government vows to legalize dozens of illegally built outposts and annex the occupied territory as part of its coalition deal with its ultra-national allies. The document released on Wednesday said that the government will advance and develop, and I'm quoting here, parts of Israel. The package laid the groundwork for what is expected to be a stormy beginning for Netanyahu's government. It could put them at odds with large parts of the Israeli public and its international allies. U.S. President Joe Biden had earlier voiced opposition to new Israeli construction in the West Bank. The German government also said that the construction of Israeli settlements in the West Bank and in East Jerusalem is increasingly jeopardizing the territorial basis for a future Palestinian state. Spokesperson for the Palestinian president, Mahmoud Abbas, said that there is no prospect for peace, security or stability in the region without a negotiated two-state solution. The Palestinians seek West Bank as the center of their future independent state. Jordan's King Abdullah II has also spoken out against the incoming government's plans. Speaking exclusively to CNN, the king said that there is concern in his country about those in Israel trying to push for changes to his custodianship of the Muslim and Christian holy sites in Israeli-occupied East Jerusalem, further adding that there are certain red lines to not be crossed and that they are prepared for a conflict if it comes to it. In the last few decades, Israel has constructed dozens of Jewish settlements there. At present, some 500,000 Israelis live in such settlements, alongside 2.5 million Palestinians. The Likud Party document was released a day before the swearing-in of the new Israeli government. The ceremony will take place later today and will see Netanyahu's return to the high office. The new government is considered Israel's most right-wing ever, with several hardline and ultra-Orthodox parties taking part in it. Israel's president, Isaac Herzog, has expressed his deep concern about the incoming government and its stance on several sensitive issues in Israel. For more on this, our correspondent Jody Cohen is joining us live from outside the Israeli parliament. Welcome to the broadcast, Jody. Hello, good morning. Now, Benjamin Netanyahu is all set to retake power in just a few hours from now. Tell us about what is happening at the swearing-in ceremony this morning. Right, so as you can see, I'm outside the Knesset Israel's parliament, where the swearing-in ceremony is expected to take place in just over an hour. There's tight security. Things are quiet right now. People are just starting to begin to trickle in. But the whole government, the whole Knesset will be present. There'll be a vote of confidence in the new government, which is expected to pass. And then the government will take their oaths of office. Now, this whole process has taken a lot longer than initially was thought might happen as a campaigning coalition the partners were very united but as soon as the negotiations began obviously they're jostling for the positions there has been some dismay among some senior Likud members um, for not receiving uh, positions and there's also some thoughts that Netanyahu had to give away too many positions to his coalition partners and certainly outgoing Prime Minister Yair Lapid who will be heading the opposition he sees this as a sign of a weakness and that says that Netanyahu is vulnerable to his coalition partners demands. Right Jody now this government is considered to be one of the most right-wing Israeli governments ever what would this mean for life in Israel? So there's sort of three layers of what the government's plan is expected to be. The first thing that I looked at was when the announcement was made yesterday that Netanyahu had signed the coalition deals with all the partners. I looked at his tweets. He published a series, a long series of tweets. And really, he was talking about what the government is going to be doing. And these seem to focus on social issues like access to education and reducing the cost of living. But then we saw that the coalition has published its principles of the coalition, which is the, the principles that they all, all agree with. And these covered issues like security, uh, like Iran, 
And then you've got the individual coalition agreements with the individual parties. And these are not legally binding, but have been agreed between the Kurds and the individual parties. So one thing that's of particular concern in Israel is um, a clause in religious Zionism's agreements with the Kurds. Um, which is concerning the rights of religious people. When it comes into conflict with liberal values, um, they're saying that religious people should be able to deny services, and this is religious people from all religions, should be able to deny services to when, in a circumstance when it goes against their religious belief. So, for example, if a hotel owner um, would have the right to refuse to serve a gay couple, for example. Right. Now, this has caused outrage across Israel. Businesses have been affirming that they will be strengthening their anti-discrimination laws in response internally. Um, the leading bank has said that it won't be issuing credit to any business that does this. And also all the leading hospitals and healthcare providers and health funds got together and issued a joint video affirming that they will be will continue to serve everyone. Netanyahu has now had to come out and say repeatedly that he his government will not harm LGBTQ rights. Um, Israel is known to be a bastion of gay rights in the Middle East, especially. Um, so it remains to be seen what will happen this year, this year. Right, right, Judy. Uh, contradiction, if you like, between what Netanyahu was saying on the issue and what the coalition agreement with religious Zionism says. Right, Jody, like you listed some of the top priorities of the incoming government. The Palestinian Authority has said that the government's plan is a significant escalation and that there are concerns about the annexation of the West Bank. Do you see this happening anytime soon? So, yes, again, this was a clause in the agreements with religious Zionism that they agree in principle to annexation of the West Bank. However, Netanyahu has, in a series of interviews with American media, has um, categorically stated that his priority is going to be to seek peace with Saudi Arabia. And he sees this as fundamental to building this regional coalition of this alliance to defend against Iran. He's also announced that all the coalition partners have agreed to let him get this priority, if you like, not to stand in his way. And commentate, some commentators are suggesting that this would mean that they wouldn't uh, actually go to annexation in practice, even though the agreement says in principle that that's on the agenda because of Netanyahu's priority. He sees making peace with Saudi Arabia as a priority for not only for Iran, but also as a way to ultimately make peace with the Palestinians. Thank you, Jody, for joining us and we're on in the Sabah and sharing your insights on this. Thanks very much. Thank you.